Today's guest is your source for Botano Sports. Join me now, it's Matthew Semish of the Botano Quran. He's the sports editor up there. But before we get to all the times up north, tell me about what was the best time that you had as a columnist for the NCHC? That had to be, had to be a pretty uh, great experience for you for uh, U.S. College Hockey Online. Yeah, it's been a lot. Uh, you know, I've been doing it since 2007. I still do it now. Um, it's one of those things where it's it's kind of a part-time job for everybody there. Um, we've all got kind of like other kind of main jobs going on. Um, I started as just like a game night, like a team reporter for them for Nebraska Omaha, where I uh, went to school, and then we eventually hired. Um, college columnist. So I, I did the WCHA for a couple of years with uh, another writer, Candace Horgan from Colorado. And then we both started doing the NCHC once that became a thing. Uh, a couple of things that stand out to me, I suppose. Uh, going to the Frozen Four in 2014, after the weekend before I moved here. Um, I know you're a Philadelphia guy, right, Ben? Right. Right. So you'll probably notice a, a name. The 14 Frozen Four is actually in uh, Philadelphia. Um, Shane Gostaspear plays, you know, it was a Flyers draft pick. Uh, he was a plus seven in the championship game against Minnesota, um, which I, I just don't think you'll ever see a stat like that in a game ever again. Mm-hmm. I remember watching that game in that arena, and my dad's from Philadelphia, so I remember texting him, like, you're going to like this kid. I mean, that's kind of like a highlight to me, I suppose. And again, that was a couple days before I moved here. Um, uh, another thing, actually, the year before, I went to the Women's Frozen Four uh, for Turner Sports and the NCAA.com website. And I was also doing the WCH High Final Fly for USCH over that weekend. Um, one was in Minneapolis and then the other was at the X in St. Paul. And that was, um, that was a lot of fun. That was a year that Minnesota's women finished an undefeated season. And it was also the last WCHA final fly before, uh, you know, the Big Ten hockey became a thing, and then obviously the NCHC too. So, yeah, um, quite a lot of um, really good experiences, and they keep going. So, Yeah, you know, I started this show because I thought when I was doing, like, the TV stories, we have a limited amount of time, a lot of material that I think is good can end up on maybe the editing room floor. When you have this NCHC responsibility in addition to, like, working in Botano, um, does that serve as, like, a great, like, extra avenue for you that you want to keep writing about something else, but, like, it's not something that's going to fit into your, like, full-time main paper? I mean, how does that... Uh, really kind of enrich your experience as a writer? Yeah, it was one of those things where when I um, when I interviewed for my job here, I asked if it was a problem that I was going to be writing for someone else, and they were like, well, as long as it doesn't interfere with like you know your main job here, then it's not really a problem, and it hasn't been. Uh, more than anything else for me, I suppose, it's been kind of a way to uh, kind of like keep in the loop with everything that's been going on with uh, D1 College Hockey. I mean, like I've been involved with it for you know, basically, you know, coming up on a decade at that point. And, uh, but more than a decade at that point. And I, I mean, I, I knew a lot of people at UNO already and, um, a lot of people from the WCHA schools and a lot that turned into NCHC schools. Uh, so really, I mean, that's just kind of a way for me to kind of like uh, for one of the better terms, I suppose, to kind of like keep tabs on people. But, um, no, it's been fun to do that. How often, I know this year is definitely different for everybody, but how often do you like to get back to Omaha? I visited my buddy Nick Amatangelo down there. He works there. Um, uh-huh. Where do you like to go to around there? And considering, like you said, going to school at UNO, does that make you yeah. way more interested in hockey, given that their team's awesome? Um, not really, because I was already into hockey before then. Uh, my dad coached... Uh, He's he been a hockey coach for years and years, even before um, you know I started there. And it was kind of like what our family grew up on, really. So I, I suppose, like, I get asked that a lot, like, if you have like a favorite sport, and hockey is just kind of like what we grew up on. Um, I have two younger brothers that played. I'm probably the least coordinated person in the history of the earth, so the sport's not really uh, for me so much. But I mean, like, I had already been. Yeah, like I already knew about the program pretty well before I started doing the um, started doing the USHO thing, even before I started going to school there in the first place. 
And then uh, my first year after high school, I was a student manager for the team, which is actually kind of funny because their head coach at the time, Mike Kemp, is still at UNO as like a associate um, athletic director. And the guy who was playing for the team, Mike Gabinet, is um, actually the head coach now. And David mm-hmm. Quinn, who used to be an assistant coach with the UNO at the time, went to Boston University and then went to the New York Rangers. So, and then I saw him in Fargo a couple of years ago um, with a NCAA regional. Um, with, that was uh, UND, uh, Minnesota Duluth won that. And I think it was Ohio State was the other team in that uh, region tournament. Oh, yeah. um, so, like, it's... Yeah, like I said before, it's just kind of like nice to um, keep up with everybody. Um, I don't get back to Omaha nearly as much as I would like to. Uh, to be honest, normally it's kind of just like around Christmas. Um, this year is well, it's a different situation for everybody, right? With the um, with the pandemic, I'm uh, pretty much looking at staying up here, which is for Christmas, which is not really you know ideal. I'd like to get back. Um, for a couple of, you know, like a couple of weeks and see everybody, but um, it's probably the uh, safe decision to stay up here. Um, there's a lot of nice things about Omaha. It's definitely a different place than Bondo for sure, just because of the size of the town. Um, you go from um, the better part of a million people to 2,500, I suppose. Like, it's, it's just different from that anyway. Um, I think there are a lot of things from Omaha that I took, from, took for granted. I feel like I took the zoo for granted. Anybody who tells me that they're going down there, I'm like, that's the first place you have to go. Like, Henry Darley Zoo is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to a lot of other, like, bigger zoos in bigger cities in the country, and, like, even, like, San Diego and stuff like that. I'm like, honestly, Omaha's is better. Um, Baxter Arena, where UNO plays, is pretty nice. If, you, if anybody who listens has ever been to Minnesota Duluth Arena, it's a lot like that. Um, and another place that... Uh, Another place I really like in Omaha is actually a place called uh, Bike Union and Coffee. It's a uh, store downtown, which is um, it's a it's a coffee shop and a bike shop where um, they work with kids who are like aging out of the foster care system. And my dad has uh, worked with a mentorship program before. Um, that's a really cool place. I mean, it's kind of like it's a very small facility, but I love what they're doing there. So. That's awesome, man. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because my re- my research isn't always perfect. But how do you land on being a sports writer and doing this from getting a secondary education degree? Because I got a lot of teacher buddies. Yeah, it actually tied in. Um, the way that it worked at UNO is that I don't know if this is just how it worked in uh, Nebraska with uh, you know education majors. It might be the same here. Like somebody from Minot State might tell you how we do it differently, but. Um, what we had at UNO for seven, twelve education majors was that they put you into what they call a field endorsement, and mine was language arts, so that you could be teaching uh, English, journalism, speech, and theater. And so we had to have um, a certain amount of, I'll say, like practicum hours, and that's how, like, kind of like um, hands-on experience with um, some kind of. Um, job experience that works with what you would be going into, and a job came up, a writing job came up with USCHO, and it kind of just uh, fell into that really. Okay, I got you. So you get that done. How do you end up from Nebraska to North Dakota? Because I've made that drive uh, once. <laughs> well, yeah, once. Uh, once feels like a long time. It's what is uh, ten hours? I think it was when I first moved up here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I, I've been doing the USHO thing in Omaha for a while. Um, I did a lot of freelancing work. And part of the freelancing that I was doing, like I said before, was with Turner Sports. And um, I actually interviewed for my job here with my boss from a hotel room in Connecticut when I was working the 2014 Women's Frozen Four at Quinnipiac. Dang. Um, and that was, yeah, kind of a... Uh, Weird experience doing a <laughs> doing a uh, job interview for something in North Dakota when I'm from Omaha, but I'm doing it in Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, like it, it all kind of it worked out pretty good. Um, Dean Blaze was the coach at UNO at the time, and obviously he used to coach at Minot High. He was uh, fairly familiar with Botno, and he kind of like gave me 
um, a little a bit of information about that. So that, I mean, that, that, he's always been really helpful. Um, and it turned out that my boss here is good friends with somebody from the Grand Forks Herald that I already knew. So, um, I mean, I, I didn't know that at the time when I applied, but it just kind of, um, it kind of worked out. I, I applied for the job and my friend at the Herald, it was probably about five minutes later that he sends me a text. Did you apply to Botnum? I'm like, yes, where are you psychic? And it, um, yeah, I don't know. I guess it kind of all in, fell into place. Uh, you know, I had applied at a whole bunch of different places. Kind of like around, I just sort of chose the adventure type thing, and this is what we're about. All right. So now that you've been here for a little while here, where would you say, like, the best stories have come from for you working with the Quran? Um, well, yeah, I've been here about six and a half years. Uh, doesn't feel like it's been that long. I mean, it's, it's gone by pretty quickly. Uh, there's been a lot of good games that kind of spring to my mind. I think of uh, the High School Boys Basketball when they beat Minot Ryan a couple of years ago uh, when Ryan was the number one team in the state. But And you might have this too, but I feel like uh, feature stories are kind of like stuff that I have a little bit more fun with. Um, I think the one that I was actually just in the paper, uh, like in our paper this week on a... Uh, a basketball player from DCB, um, Luka Dragovic, a sophomore from Serbia. Um, he's going into a medical field. Um, he wants to go into physical therapy uh, eventually, but like, he's been working with uh, DCB's uh, flu shot clinics and um, COVID-19 testing. Uh, it's like, stuff, stuff like that is really uh, fun for me to do, I think. And, I mean, like, again, you might have the same thing. I would imagine stuff that you kind of uh, have uh, a little bit longer to work on. You kind of get a little bit more in-depth on. Do you find that, too? Yeah, a little bit here. We just started our Athlete of the Week series, and you always try to find something. Like, sure, like, they're an awesome athlete, but, I mean, how do they deviate from, like, the typical, like, just winning a bunch, you know, type thing? Yeah, exactly. That, that that's lot, what right? I like about it. You kind of, like, get to know the person, um and kind of what they're like away from the grass, the field, the court, whatever, right? So. Mm-hmm. And you didn't bring up, like, the ice here, and I was going to ask you, this is a newer thing for you, even in all your time here. You've covered the Lumberjacks hockey team a lot, but now the women's team is coming along, and I asked people in the administration, and, of course, they're going to say, like, great, it's going to be a great addition to the community. They, they're hockey mad up here from your position. Uh, what do you think uh-huh. about the addition of a women's hockey team at DCB? I'm really excited about it. Uh, like I said before, I have some experience, or prior experience in uh, college women's hockey before I moved here. And uh, Bondo has had a pretty competitive 19U program for like the uh, high school level. Uh, so, yeah, no, I think it's a good idea. Um, when DCB cut football in uh, well, about a year ago now, I mean, I, I wasn't exactly in favor of that, but uh, they were, at the time, they were looking at potentially adding a couple sports, or like or at least one or maybe more. Um, I knew women's hockey was an idea from the beginning, and it turned out that it had uh, pretty good legs with uh, people who were um, getting in touch with administrators, being like, okay, yeah, this could be a good idea. And it seemed like it all came together pretty quickly. Uh, they announced in February that they were going to... Um, start the program for this year, uh, for the season that just started. And they pretty much had a roster set to go by the time that they formally hired a coach. So they, they moved um, pretty quickly. Like, they were uh, pretty serious about it. And, yeah, no, I think it's a I think it's a really good thing for the community here. I mean, there's a lot of support for hockey here anyway. Um, I kind of wonder what... Uh, what the pandemic might do with, um, you know, crowds considering, or at least for now, considering they're not allowing, like, you know, a lot of people into any arena for anything right now, right? Um, but Pretend, even yeah. with that, even with that, I hope that, um, yeah, I mean, I hope that enthusiasm is still there. So. What do you, how good do you think the team can be given that, like, you said, like, their roster is pretty much formulated from the get-go? Uh-huh. Um, that's a good question. Uh, this year is going to be tough to tell, I think, because there's a lot of schools that have ACHA teams that aren't playing until the spring semester. 
Uh, I don't know if you've looked at that um, already. I think it might be a little bit different for Division One with uh, with Wyoming State. Yeah, but, they're still trying to get through uh, it pretty close to right now. It's just there's been a lot of game moving around and stuff, you know. Yeah, and the USCHA announced last week that they've uh, put together kind of like their eligibility rules for who is who, who can qualify for the national tournament. And like I know that. Uh, for Division Two women, which is what these is involved with, uh, they would have to play against four different teams. And right now, I think they're playing against three between Minot State. They play Minot State this weekend, and then they play them uh, a couple times afterward. They played NDSU last weekend, and they play like Superior State. Um, I know they're looking at some. They're looking at adding games uh, in the spring semester. Um, so the whole situation is kind of fluid, but. Uh, DCB played their first games last weekend in Fargo. Um, watching the live stream, I mean, they look reasonably competitive. I mean, it gets, it's a small sample size, right? Uh, it's just the two games. But, um, no, I, I liked a lot of what I saw from them. So, Do you want to pick a winner for that home-and-home home series with Minot State, considering this is going to air Thanksgiving week? <laughs> oh, that's a um, – I, you know what? I'm not sure. If, I think I might sit on the fence because I know both coaches. Uh, I know you've talked to Reed Fox, uh here before, and Ryan Miner used to be a goalie of the college here. He's a Ryan's an awesome guy, and it's uh, always nice to see him. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I might try and stay on both of their good sides. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea here. Uh, two sides to what you do. I would believe as a sports writer here, do you enjoy the writing or the photography more to get that great picture on the front page? You know, this is one of those questions where I might have a different answer for you in an hour. Uh, I, I've been asked that a handful of times by other people at uh, like different papers and things like that. And like, I, I do both of those things. Like, I, like I'm a photographer here, and obviously, I, like I write most of my, well, I like I write sports stories anyway. Um, I also lay out a lot of our paper every week, so that's kind of like an added thing too. Um, I don't know if there is one that I like absolutely like more than the other two. Uh, in terms of the design, I. I I kind of like to kind of like play with stuff ahead of time and kind of like get uh, a visual of what stuff looks like even before I have, um, you know, photos and art and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, no, I think I think they're all kind of more or less on equal footing for me, I suppose. Do you think that a paper, like, excluding, like, typos and errors like that, is a paper better with better pictures or better writing? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I, I would like to think for my own self that, uh, like, kind of just like self betterment. I mean, I would like to think that my, you know, writing kind of like speaks for itself. Uh, but at the same time, art always helps. I mean, like, it's uh, we were talking about feature stories before, for example. I mean, if you if you really want to give. Uh, a reader a sense of better idea of like what's going on with whoever the story is about then it's nice to have those visuals and so the art uh, the art tells a lot of the story in itself mm-hmm. so uh another interest that you have that doesn't really show up around here in our local sports is big uh you know pro soccer premier league fan right so how do you mm-hmm. kind of get your fix when it comes to that i know we talked to nbc can only do so much here but at least we have something are you like do you download Peacock for that or what? I haven't yet. I probably should do, uh, especially considering that. Well, I'm a Manchester City fan, and uh, for some reason, NBC decided to have Man City and Liverpool only on Peacock uh, the other uh, last weekend, which is I don't know. It, it's a big game, so why they only had it on the streaming service, I don't know. But no, that's something I definitely need to look into. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, like, the main thing that I would say to people around here, and this sounds like I'm probably kissing up to you a little bit, is to watch KMOT on the weekends. That seems to help. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For the Premier League, anyway. Uh, like, I have other teams that I follow in other countries, and um, 
being from Omaha, like Union Omaha is a, a USL League One team that started this year. Uh, that's something that I got into pretty well. So I'm, like USL, they have every, all their games on ESPN Plus, so that um, so that helps. But yeah, uh, you know, I've been I've been a Man City fan since my freshman year of high school, which is uh, too long ago, uh, '97, and it's a lot easier being a soccer fan now than it was. Um, back then for sure um you know there it used to be that you would only be able to find it on maybe highlights on like a random couple of channels uh espn used to have champions league games and that's that's about it really but um no and then espn picked up picked the Premier league and then nbc has had it for a long time now too so uh I, I mean fifa helps too i mean i you and i have played a couple of times uh probably been a while probably because i'm scared of you on fifa but oh yeah right you uh, beat me, so. <laughs> but yeah no for sure it, it is um no it's a good time to be a soccer fan now i think i mean apart from you know watching games and being slightly weirded out by having nobody in the stand but um, it is what it is what about the best time being a, a man city fan specifically like what what's been like the high point since 97 for you guys yeah um, it's been definitely in the last 10 years, I suppose, uh, winning a few Premier League uh, titles. Um, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's probably the height of it, really. Uh, we kind of always seem to struggle in the Champions League. Um, but to be honest, I'm not entirely heartbroken about it because I adopted Man City when we were a third division team in England. And... Uh, it's one of those things where, like, I remember when we were terrible, and not to, you know, not not to dismiss right away anybody who like is like a fair weather fan or whatever. But it's one of those things where, like, you know, I I lived through the hard times. Like, it's fine. But um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Part part of me kind of like hopes we don't get too big for uh, that sake. But um, yeah, no, ever. Um, yeah, the last uh, 10, 15 years here, it's been a lot better than it used to be. Yeah, that's been like whenever Philadelphia is able to win something, it's always under the radar, like the 08 Phillies or the 17 Eagles. Like, nobody really had an expectation for them. And so, like, that was fun for them to come up real fast. What about um, – what are the best and worst parts of being really tall? I don't think we've touched on that. You said you're not, <laughs> the, you're not like the athletic brother, but, I mean, you still got frame. No. Um, yeah, if anybody had ever met – Alex Eisen um, from the Minot Daily News. He's uh, in Michigan now. He was mm-hmm. he's not there anymore. But uh, we me and Alex are pretty much the same height. Um, so it was nice having like a skinnier body double whenever I was around him. I like stay track and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. That was probably the best thing. Um, the worst thing is I don't know. To be honest, you probably get. You get asked that by strangers a lot more than you'd probably like to. You know, like if you're just like going grocery shopping or whatever, just people are like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> uh, Yeah, you can, you can definitely live without that, I think. All right, so you admitted to yourself and us that uh, you were like the, the clumsy Semish brother, is that right? What about. Uh, what, what's it been like? Compared, compared to Ben and Tim, yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, that, that, that comparison is, I mean, like, I, at most people would have that title when they're your brothers, man. What's it been like having, like, pro athletes in the family and staying close and, uh, you know, hearing about their experiences? Yeah. Um, with my youngest brother, Tim, I mean, that's it, it's been a lot of fun uh, following him um, through his uh, athletic career. Uh, he started at the football team at UNO, actually, and then UNO cut football, and Northern Illinois picked him up. Um, so the family allegiances kind of went to DeKalb. Um, and then he was on a couple of, well, more than a couple of uh, NFL practice squads with, he started in Miami, uh, Tennessee, San Diego, and Denver. And he's been playing the cross recently. Um, no, it's, it's a lot of fun watching him. And we actually kind of come from, um, I, I kind of like an athletic family, uh, my dad is really into cycling, uh, used to swim a lot, and we have an uncle on his side who was drafted by the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, 
I, I remember when we went down to Miami when Northern Illinois was playing Florida State in the Orange Bowl. Uh, we stayed at Eric's house and in his, there's a guest bedroom where he has, and I just think this is the coolest idea. Uh, he has his rookie contract with the Sixers in like a shadow box. Oh, cool. And yeah, no, so I suppose to a certain degree there's, um, yeah, it's kind of a family tradition. We all, we all aren't um, the most athletic people in the world, at least I'm not anyway, but it's definitely fun to watch the people who are. So maybe that was the time that he made an impression on the Dolphins to make the practice squad when he was in the stadium? That could have been, yeah. That's a good point. I didn't think about it that way. But, uh, yeah, no, it, I mean, it was crazy for a Mac school to get into the Orange Bowl in the first place. But, um, yeah, at, at the time, I wouldn't have thought that, um, you know, uh, like, it was a couple of years down the line anyway, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have thought at the time, I, you know, holy crap, I mean, he could be playing here again just in different colors, but, uh, no, it's it's cool that he did that. Yeah, that's why I wanted to talk to you, like, in the middle of the week, because it's like a recovery day for the action. Tell me a little bit about, like, how does he go from football to lacrosse, like, that transition, how did that come about, and uh, where does he kind of see the future in lacrosse? You know, he had played lacrosse in high school as well. Um, so it's kind of like something he always had an interest in. Uh, he kind of bounced around a little bit. Like, he actually played on Northern Illinois' uh, ACHA hockey team in his senior year after their football season was over, too. So, um, but, uh, no, like, and he's been playing, um, like, he had been playing with a national indoor uh, team from Israel. Like, he kind of, like, uh, picked up with them. Uh, but he seems really happy with it, so, uh, yeah, hopefully that kind of All right, sweet, man. Well, hey, uh, Matthew, just to wrap this up here, what do you own the Semish brothers at? What's What do you have on them that you can, that you can say, like, hey, you guys can't hold a candle to me in this? <laughs> uh, age by a couple of years and maybe about an inch in height. I think that's probably about it. Hey, man, that's what, that's what I would take, too, if I could, man. You got, the, you got the height numbers on it, man. Hey, uh, this has been awesome, dude. I, I mean, I can't wait to see you around here once with the, the regional times get safe and people can actually, like, come together and not be going to random host, host city gyms uh, throughout the next couple of seasons here. But uh, can't wait to see you again, Matt. And, uh, hey, it was great catching up, and thanks for doing this. Yeah, you got it. Thanks, man.